Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson on fundamentals of robotics. This is Dr. Maddie Baba Yassel from Mecrodom and I'm honored to be here with you today with another new lesson on fundamentals of robotics. Today's lesson is another lesson on the necessary tools to express robot motions. In this lesson and future lesson, you will become familiarized with different tools necessary to represent robot configuration. So without further ado, let's In previous lesson, we saw that the robot's configuration answers the question where the robot is. And we saw that we have two ways to represent the configuration, implicit representation and explicit representation. Implicit representation is when we want to represent the configuration by embedding the curved space of configurations into a higher dimensional Euclidean space subject to constraints. An explicit representation is when we want to express the configuration with the minimum number of parameters. My suggestion is to watch the configuration and configuration space lesson before preceding this lesson. You may also want to watch the preliminaries video and also the degrees of freedom video because uh, the material there can be beneficial to grasp and understand this lesson better. We start this lesson with a planar example to see what we mean to express the configuration of a robot. Suppose a toy car with its motion confined to the plane and two coordinate frames S and B with their corresponding unit axes. Note that a hat notation shows a unit vector. B is called a body frame since it's a fixed frame attached instantaneously to the moving body. Therefore, to find the configuration of the toy car, we should express the position and orientation of the body's fixed frame coordinates in the base frame coordinates. One way to represent the orientation of the body coordinates in terms of the base coordinates is using a rotation matrix. The columns of this matrix are the coordinate axes of the B frame expressed in the coordinate axes of the S frame. The dot represents the dot product between the coordinate axes. And since they are unit vectors, the dot product represents the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. As a reminder, recall that if A and B are two vectors with known lengths and angle between them, then the dot product of two vectors is the multiplication of the lengths of the two vectors and cosine of the angle between the two vectors. In other words, the dot product uh, of two vectors can be expressed as the projection of one vector onto the other, multiplied by the lengths of the other vector. The two by two rotation matrix belongs to the four dimensional space subject to the three constraints. These constraints are each column of the rotation matrix is a unit vector. In other words, the lengths of the column vectors are one, and this is obvious because the column vectors of the rotation matrix are coordinate frames. And also, because these coordinate frames are orthogonal to each other, then the dot product of the columns is zero. Thus, we have one degree of freedom which is parameterized by the angle alpha to represent the orientation. So recall that 
um, for the space minus three constraints, we would have only one degree of freedom, which is alpha. And this alpha can represent the orientation. The rotation matrix is an implicit way to represent the orientation. Since we use four parameters subject to three constraints to parameterize alpha. Now that we found the way to represent the orientation of the toy car on the plane, it's time to represent this position. The position of the origin of the body frame and base frame coordinates can be expressed as the vector p from the origin of the s frame to the origin of the b frame. Thus, the configuration of the toy car can be represented by the pair R and P, which is the description of the orientation and position of the B frame with respect to the S frame. This means that base frame S can be coincident with the body frame B by rotating the base frame coordinates around the Z axis by alpha, and then translating the origin by P. Using a similar approach, we can express the configuration of a robot in a space. We can use frames to do this. One simple way to represent the position and orientation and thus the configuration of a robot in a space follows these steps. We first, fix a frame to the body of the robot according to the right-hand rule. Sometimes this frame is attached to an important point on the rigid body, like the center of mass, but this is not required. And then we fix a frame in a space. Then the robot's configuration can be represented by the position of the origin of the body frame expressed in the space frame coordinates and the directions of the coordinate axes of the body frame expressed in the space frame coordinates. Note that the body frame is the stationary frame that coincides with the frame attached to the body at a particular instant in time. That's going to wrap up today's lesson. And I hope you, it gives an introduction to you about what we mean when we are talking about the configuration of a robot. Stay tuned for the next video on rotation matrices. Rotation matrices are implicit way to represent the orientation of a robot. The lessons will build up over time. And if you follow them in order, I promise you that you will never ever need any other resource to understand fundamentals of robotics. I know that you rush to simulate and code the robots. I understand you, but bear with me here. I want to build the foundation necessary for the fundamentals first. And when we have this foundation, we will reach to that point too. I promise you that. Before you go, don't forget to leave us any comments or feedbacks that you have. We'd love to hear from you. And also, don't forget to be a part of the Mechorodon family. We'd love to have you as part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.